beautiful. It's magic, absolutely magic to be able to dig something out of the ground, make some pots out of it, be with it through that whole process, through the wood firing and then take them out at the end. I think my pots, they're, they're about this place, they're about the place where I am and I'm only here on this earth for a short period of time. It's about leaving something behind I suppose and, and making something of where you are really. You can't do more than that than use the materials that are here, whether it's the clay that's there, or the leaves that are in the hedgerow that are imprinted on the pots. Doug Fitch is a modern day country potter who digs his own clay, as generations of country potters have done before him. He lives and works in Devon, in the south of England, a place renowned for its rich deposits of clay. He's inspired by traditional country pottery but recognises that, in order to move the tradition forward, he must find his own voice within it. His workshop overlooks a remote wooded valley at Holyford. He describes it as a magical place where he feels very close to nature. In this rural location, all his senses are stimulated by the natural environment, and the solitude enables him to work with an intense focus. Surrounded by the natural beauty of the countryside, he's close to both his raw materials and to his sources of inspiration. The colours of the Devon autumn are reflected in the golden hues of his pots, which share the bold simplicity of English medieval earthenware. The clay is prized for its highly plastic quality, which makes it perfect for throwing pots. Its purity means that it's workable straight from the ground and its natural colours make it ideal for decorated slipwares. I'm not from Devon, but uh, I've been here nearly 20 years now. And, but before that, when I was a, a student at college, um, I was very interested in the North Devon slipware tradition and the country pottery tradition. And, uh, I mean, of course there's clay here because Devon's made of clay, so um, it, it has a great tradition of, of, of um, country pottery. I need to know what I'm making before I get on the wheel, I need to know the shape. Because in order to keep the making marks fresh and um, and, and energetic. I try to get from the start of the pot to the finish of the pot in as few moves as possible because it keeps the, 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 the keeps the throwing rings lively. I like my marks to be spontaneous uh, and flowing and in order for that to happen you've got to know exactly where they're going to start and where they're going to end and, um, and so I'll work it out on a piece of board beforehand. My pots don't take very long to decorate, that's the, that's the whole point of them really, is that the decoration and the mark making is enough to say what I want to say. 
when I'm marking through slip, I'm not just seeing, I'm not just seeing the line that I'm making. I'm looking at the amount of slip that when the line goes through the wet slip, it moves the the slip away, so you get um, a thicker outline. If you put your marks in the wrong place or the composition is wrong, then um, that's the end of that. That's the end of the pot, really, because you can't wipe it off and start again. It's a bit of an adrenaline thing, really, I suppose. Once, once the, the wet slips on the pot, and then you're in there, you just got to go for it. Harvest jug is one that I've made for the um, for the Stockley English Church, which is probably about a mile from here. It's the local church. I feel they represent uh, something that's gone now, which is man's connection with the earth. They were a ceremonial piece, particularly in Victorian times when the harvest was brought in. 
um, there would be a big celebration. These would be full of ale or cider and um, everybody would celebrate the fact that they successfully brought the harvest in. On the front uh, I've got a, a, a verse from a harvest hymn. Um, All the world is God's own field, fruit as praise to God we yield. And, and uh, on the back, for the flower ladies, St Mary's Church, Stockley English. Um, and although this is for the flower ladies of Stockley English Church, is actually a little bit of a, uh, in memory of the flower ladies of my childhood. When I was a, a child, my father was a church minister. And um, there were some, some lovely old ladies who we used to call the flower ladies, who used to do the flowers every Sunday. I, I, don't, I can't remember what their names were, but, but they, they were really lovely ladies. And so I thought, well, it would be nice to do a piece in memory of them, really. Also, I felt that the Stockley English Church should have a pot from the Stockley English Potter. Doug's approach to making music has much in common with his potting. The music that he plays with the country punk band, The Love Daddies, is raw, direct and full of energy. It's not over-processed or elaborate. How comforting the he says the notes he plays on the guitar are like the marks he makes in the slip when decorating his pots. Both are vital parts of the life of this modern-day country potter. It makes me feel fine. It does it every time. What 